Good day, everyone. Thank you for coming to today's Folio Forum, which is sponsored by the Open Library Environment, also known as Olay, in partnership with EBSCO and Index Data. My name is Holly Misselbauer, and I am an IT project manager at Cornell University Library and the host for today's event. Our topic today is the catalog. Today's session, like all folio forums, is being recorded and will be posted to the Open Library Environment website. I would like to note, however, that we had an issue with the recording of the March 15th forum. This is the one that was two weeks ago, and we do not have a recording of that forum. Uh, we apologize for that, and the presenter is actually putting together his slide deck with some notes that we plan to post shortly. As an open forum, participants can see each other and can also see all questions that are submitted. We have muted everyone except the speakers to ensure good sound quality. We value your participation and encourage you to engage in the topic. Use the question box within WebEx to enter questions and comments as they come to you. The speaker will, will address the questions at the end of the presentation. If you like to tweet, please use the Twitter hashtag Folio Forum. We also encourage you to continue the discussion on, the topic, on this topic on the Folio discussion website, discuss.folio.org. Our speaker today is Mark Johnson. Mark is a software developer with knowledge integration. He is relatively new to the library domain, having spent the last 12 years learning about education, online advertising, publishing, and insurance domains. Along the way, he has become an enthusiast, an enthusiast of agile software development and has played various roles and used a few different programming languages and tools. Welcome, Mark, and let's begin. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you, Holly, for uh, the introduction. Um, I'm sorry if I, if I arrived a little late. I, uh, I was having challenges with my machine that was making it hard for me to get into WebEx. Um, so hopefully I'm here, and hopefully everybody can hear me now. Um, thank you very much for the nice introduction. Um, and I will try to share my desktop as well. Excellent. Okay, so um, my desk. Hopefully, you can all see my. Um, yes, my we can. Thank you. Here. Brilliant. Excellent. Okay, um, so uh, mandatory technical challenges out of the way. Hopefully, um, uh, we can get started. Um, as Holly said, today's topic is has been titled the catalog. Um, I've tweaked that title a little bit to uh, extend it to the catalog metadata and knowledge bases. Um, that sounds probably more complicated than I'm going to get into. Um, so I'll start with a little bit of background about me. So as Holly said, I, I'm fairly new to the library domain and fairly new to, to this context. So, um, so probably the first of a few caveats is that if I say something slightly crazy or weird, then please feel free to tell me because um, that's the best way for me to learn. Um, but my background is in is in um, mostly in web systems and distributed systems, working for a variety of companies, um, including um, Pearson Education Systems, uh, Education Services, Compare the Market, which is a insurance comparison um, website in the UK that I'm get that actually now that I think about it, probably nobody on this, nobody else on this call will have heard of, um, and a consultant and a global consultancy called ThoughtWorks. Um, that means I've had some experience in a, in a variety of different domains um, but so and so I'm into so for me it's, a, it's all about I, I'm an enthusiast in terms of learning about different domains so um, yeah please do let me know if I say anything a little strange here um, what's lucky is that I'm working with knowledge integration who are working with index data on folio and thankfully Ian who I work closely with has, has lots of experience in, in this domain with working on projects for JISC in the UK and and other organizations, including um, GoKB and KB Plus, 
what that means is he gets to listen to me um, you know, express things slightly differently maybe than people who've been in this context for a long time and explain to me why what I've missed or how I've how I've not quite got the right angle on something or whatever. it's really great to be able to bounce those sort of ideas so that's um, and that's how I came to be involved in this project is is working with knowledge integration uh, to start us off um, I thought I'd talk about um, so as far as I think I'll set some context. This for me, this is this is this is going to be me telling a story about um, about the journey we've been on. I joined Folio in April, March, April time last year, I think, and um, so I've been learning a lot in that in that time in that process. Um, this is going to be my almost I suppose an experience report of sorts, um, sharing the the process and the, and the journey that we've been on, but also some of the ideas that we've been talking about, some of the themes and concepts that, that Folio has been um, investigating and trying to explore as it, as it goes forward. Um, one of the things, one of the key things that that, that means is that um, this, is, this isn't me um, attempting to, your, uh, to be an authoritative source. Um, there's a good chance that there are plenty of people listening know more about this um people who've been involved in the project as well and have, and have, and have involved conversations about this and also um people who haven't yet and and whose opinions we'd like to hear because we're we're interested in feedback about this so, um, a lot of these topics are, are involved and nuanced so um any you know we'll talk about feedback later on but yeah feedback is welcome on these subjects i'm going to start with um a quick kind of idea the um the idea of the catalog so where did this come from so this was a term that um i first heard back in april last year when we were um talking about these ideas and this is a definition i'm not entirely sure where this definition came from i think it's um came from Se from said index data um and it alludes to this idea that um, we want, we, you know, we, we, we desire a unified data model, um, an infrastructure for um, bibliographic, and it turns out possibly other types of metadata um, for electronic resources and for physical resources. Um, I tend to extend this to the my my understanding of this and my kind of opinion, I suppose, on on some of this is that I think of this as the as the um, as the tension between wanting to have lots of different kinds of metadata and lots of different resources relate to each other um, whilst also being able to easily find things and also being able to distinguish between these between these different types of metadata um, this for me this is i guess this is a, a sense of context for where this journey started this was where this term was the start of, of us starting to explore these kinds of topics and trying to get a handle on on what this would look like in Folio. Um, I hope, you know, over the time we've had a lot of conversations that have gone further than this and have and 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 dug into these ideas. So I'm going to start with a little bit of context from my perspective. This is um, probably very familiar to a lot of the audience. Um, for me, this is a lot about setting the stage for, for some of the ideas that we've been talking about. Uh, this is a quote I found. I, I, I like this quote because it, um, it acknowledges the, the specialist and, and very nuanced skill that is that is um, cataloging and then coming up with coming up with um, particularly good and descriptive metadata for resources. Um, I think we've 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 cataloging has an interesting has, has cataloging been a core activity from from my perspective for a long time. And it's facing a set of challenges because it's so because of the amount of resources and because of the um, and because of the amount of effort and time and constraints on some of the time that people have to do these activities, which we'll talk about later. But I think this is for me cataloging is a core part of what we've um, um, what we've been talking about. Now, the Changes. So um, I talk about. I, I like to distinguish between different kinds of metadata, and primarily I've split that down into two places: descriptive metadata being um, 
you know, the, the, the notion of, of, of what's about, what the resources are, um, how to describe the resources themselves. This would be, you know, the, the, the name or the title of a book or the, um, the authors or creators or contributors and um, information about that resource specifically in a way that allows people to understand what it is and allows people to, to um, understand what's inside it, what the, what the kind of ideas behind it are. Whereas administrative data, I think more of as information that allows libraries to manage those resources and to manage their access to those resources and to look after them and to figure out whether they're spending the money in an appropriate fashion and and whether and, and whether the you know whether the patrons are getting value you know whether the patrons are using which which resources the patrons are using those kind of ideas. Um, we've also started to see, I think, in recent years, um, different kinds of resources. Um, partly that's the, yeah, the you know the kind of um, increase in electronic resources over uh, um, alongside physical resources, in the sense that we're seeing ebooks and journals available in electronic form, but also more interesting, you know, kind of more diverse things like maps or both in physical and electronic form, but audio recording, scientific data. Um, some of use the example of music scores. I, I think that one of the themes that I've been seeing for the, from this project is that we've seen beforehand and during is there's this significant increase in, you know, in, in these types and different types of resources. What we've also seen historically is, um, and from, from a newcomer to this domain, I find the proliferation of standards um, uh, to be fascinating because I'm used to um, domains which haven't been as collaborative and haven't figured out ways to share or ways to interchange information or way, and, and, and haven't been able to have these kind of conversations. So for me, the proliferation of these, uh, of, a, of a set of standards has been, is a fascinating idea for me. What one, it does bring with it some challenges that there is a lot of history here and a lot of, and, and a lot of different, a lot of very useful information and data held in a lot of different forms. And, um, and, and that's an opportunity and a challenge, I think. And that's a theme that I'll be talking about is that there are, is that there's this kind of, is that there, there, there is opportunities and um, challenges to, to be looking at for a lot of these ideas. Another thing that we've seen um, is the emergence of knowledge bases in the in in the library context. So when I think about knowledge bases, and, and I'm aware that there are um, there are different scope for some knowledge bases, I think of them as a as as appearing partly for initially for supporting the supporting discovery systems and supporting the ability for the patients to be able to find the resources they're looking for effectively. And that scope has grown into supporting other systems, being able to provide, looking after administrative metadata for electronic resources in particular, and being the kind of the hidden glue that, that provides an awful lot of capabilities for library systems platforms, library service platforms. We've seen this, and we've seen the the kind of increase in information and data that these have brought about in the sense that we you know we now have um, in some cases metadata down to the article level, or we have um you know we have we have vast ideas vast stores of information about the um, the which resources organizations have access to so what this, what what are these themes kind of result in. These things have brought about this idea, I think, that um, over time, particularly recently that I've been understanding, there is increasing constraints on the budget and time available to um, librarians um, looking after a much bigger volume of resources, both physical and electronic, and, and, a, and a changing set of those resources in the sense that the rate of change of which things they have access to or which physical resources they have within their organization, those things are increasing. And, and that presents a, a significant amount of um, kind of load on, on, the, on, the, on the capabilities and the, and the time available to the staff in, in libraries. Um, the other thing is that we're seeing 
a, a significant increase in resource types, which I think I've talked about. And we're seeing that the, that the representations and interchange standards that we've had for a long time, things like Mark 21, um, we're seeing quite a significant evolution in, in those in the sense of ideas emerging like Big Frame and um, Dublin Core. I think this, this, this sort of, for me, this set the stage for, for my involvement and how I've been involved in, in Trollio at this point, because it leads to a set of opportunities. And those opportunities, I think, are um, interesting to us because we'd like to harness them. What we're, one of the things that's key about Folio is because we're looking at this from two perspectives, which is the perspective of how does this, how does this platform appear and be useful to people, to existing organizations and with existing um, sets of resources that they have access to or they hold. Um, alongside where are these ideas going, where are the models for the future going, what are the sets of um, what's what are the sets of um, of information what are the sets of resources that are going to be in the future? What are the, what's the what are the different standards that we're going to need to support in the future? Um, and I think those two ideas are something that we've been we've been talking about quite a lot over the course of this project. Um, also, that the, there's, there's an emergence of, of ideas like linked data to be able to show how we can relate these things together and how we can, how what can we do with those relationships? What can we do that we couldn't do before because we have those connections? Um, I think for me, this is about um, you know looking at this from a from a perspective of there are there are there are you know there are there are potential improvements and solutions that we can find. For me, one of the interesting ones is. Um, when I talk about leveraging cataloging effort, I think that's the notion that we're already seeing that in the sense that we see that um, in the that something like you know there, that, that there are there's really fascinating aspects of metadata and there might be forever descriptive metadata and there might be mundane aspects and the mundane aspects we might have opportunities to not need to spend effort and time looking after over you know, repeatedly across organisations. When I talk about distinguishing between metadata of different purposes, I think of um, that being the notion of descriptive metadata and administrative, and the likelihood that administrative and management get split into other ideas as well. In that the different parts of organized of libraries and the different parts of the systems that support them might not need access to all of those things all of the time, or might not need to understand as much about each one of those at the same time. So hopefully that sets the context and relatively um, quick run through of, of, of where my understanding of, of Folio and what it was trying to do are in this area's kind of ideas and, and opportunities. Where are we Where are we trying to go? Where's my, what's my understanding of how we're trying to embrace those opportunities and move and, and kind of move forward with this? So. Um, and some of these are, are, are starters that I put you know, that I tried to kind of express the themes that I'd heard and the ideas that I'd heard going you know, ongoing in the in the project, and um, and trying to express them as a as a way of starting the discussion about um, how we how we trade off um, the different kind of opportunities, how we how we decide which ones of these things we want to explore or need to address um, more importantly. So supporting the library's operational needs, this is this is effectively um, it sounds fairly obvious I suspect and it's it's it really is in a sense it's it's there to um, mean that folio has a has a, has a need to, to do all of the things that are necessary for the operation of a library and we need to be able to support those and support those in a way that um, reduces the time pressures and um, the burden on resources as much as possible from where they are now. Um, the second one is the notion that by linking these types of messages out, by expressing them differently or by making them more available to different parts of um, the system, the, the modules or systems on, on the Folio platform, we might see some interesting or novel uses of them appear and we'd like to make sure that we don't um, reduce the chances of that happening. In fact, we want to make it so that it's relatively easy for 
and people to see this idea and think, well, actually, we, if we just put these two things together, we could make this, um, we could we could make this happen. So, and the third one for me is is about um, easing the transition from from existing systems because all you know all of the libraries that I've been involved in talking with have have existing systems and they have existing um, sets of resources they have access to or existing sets of um, books and, and you know items that they have in their in their effectively in their inventory or and we need to need to acknowledge that and, and be aware of it and that might be in some cases that 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 some of that information is already held in in systems that will stay and in some cases they'll be on migration but I, I think that we, we we've, we've talked about the idea of wanting to make sure that we can support a variety of scenarios for this to digging into this I think I've already talked about these um I'm a, you know I, one of the things that fascinated me coming to this domain was was how um accomplished um people you know, librarians and people who work in libraries are at making systems that weren't designed to work together work together I think that's a fascinating feature of, of these things and, and how and and how they and how ingenious efforts have been made to to, to connect things that were never intended to be um, I think Folio has an opportunity with the way that it's being designed to to ease that, to try and to try and um, at least make the the pathways between systems and between modules in Folio um, simpler and easier, which will allow us to increase the use of mess data across these different areas. I think one of the challenges that I've heard about is this idea that. Um, you know that, that sometimes information can be held within one place, and it can be very difficult to get it to somewhere else where it could be useful. Um, and lastly, this this notion of unifying um, physical and electronic resources. This is something that we've is something we've talked about quite a lot, and 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 effectively with the need to try and make it more um, make it easier to to manage both of these sets. I won't go into too much detail. These are some examples. The, the slides will be available later, so I think some of these are just examples of how we can allow for different things to different uses of metadata to be um, embraced or used, and, and how and how some libraries are already doing it. Um, and again, easing transitions effectively. How do we embrace all of the different or a variety of different formats that we're talking about, and how um, and how do we progressively migrate? So sets of information into Folio in a way that retains as much of that information as possible and effectively um, utilizes it where it's useful and um, doesn't that doesn't burden the rest of the system where it isn't useful. And I think that's a topic I'll talk about. Um, so where are we at the moment? I'll whistle through all of this. This is. Um, this is effectively the, the journey of conversations and, and ideas that we've been going through. So um, I joined and I, and I went to a, um, a resource management summit. And I imagine some of the people from that summit are on the call uh, today um, in April last year. That's where all of this was. All of this was completely fresh to me. Effectively, I had some ideas, but this was this is where I started to get a, a handle on some of the ideas of, of some of the challenges that libraries face. We followed that up with. Um, a more a more kind of wider topic focuses in in Copenhagen and in Budapest about general folio the general folio platform as a whole rather than specific resource management and there was another resource management um, summit in November where we, where people dug into the the workflows and the and the details of how some of these processes might work these pictures are examples of of some of the output that we we got from these. Um, another notion that we've been talking about very briefly, and, and I, that, that's very core to Folio's idea, is this idea that um, focusing on how the user experience and how the and, and, and hence the user interface and the interaction design are kind of core parts of, of the of this effort. And um, there are other presentations that go into this in a lot more detail, but I think this is one. This demonstrates the interactions between. The development work, the user experience, and the and, and the more, and the strategic pieces where we're planning a roadmap and the and the priorities. 
really, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this. This is more of a set of scene, but that there's a lot of um, kind of in kind of interrelated processes going on where we where we look at these things from different perspectives and we're trying to um, figure them out. This leads me to the um, special interest groups. As part of this, the special groups, we, well, the folio has a set of special interest groups which discuss specific topics related to the project and specifically to the topics that I'm talking about. The resource management, metadata management, and resource access special interest groups are, are the ones that I pay most attention to and are involved in um, because they are talking about how we model this sort of stuff and how we how we talk about changing the workflows and the and the way that um, these activities happen inside libraries. Okay, so um, I probably rambled on a little bit on, on that, and it's, this is probably obvious to everybody else except for me. Um, let's talk about some of the themes that have come out of these conversations. Um, firstly, one of the topics that's come up pretty much all of the time when, uh, when I've talked about these ideas is, is the is the kind of is how is how do the what are the terms work instance and item and how do they fit together so and we've had lots of every time I've shared some of these ideas we've had conversations about what these mean and how these things work and I'm I'm a long long way from being a, a bib frame expert which is where I first encounter these terms but this is my way of reflecting my understanding of them and how I describe them. Um, I'd be very open to finding out if this is crazy or if this is different. Um, effectively, I think of the work as the um, I'm written conceptual essence. That's from that's effectively the, the definition I see from the Library of Congress, which is for me that's effectively the the actual the the idea of the um, so I might I well, I'll work with examples. Um, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, the book in general, is the work. Whether it was a hard co a hardcover um, first edition or second edition, whether it was a paperback or an ebook, that's the instance. The instance describes the specifics of how it was published, where, when, what materials, all those sort of ideas, and then items and potentially in, um, in the electronic domain, this is different. This is specifically really to, to physical to a certain extent. Is the actual copy of that. Um, of that instance that we've got the actual the actual hardback copy I can pick up on the shelf and borrow. The right hand side suggests that the, the 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 bottom of that is the barcode that we're talking about. So I think of these as the different kinds of metadata and the different ideas of how these things relate. So hopefully that sets the scene for some of the terminology that I personally use um, in some of the later topics. Another topic that's come up um, is this idea of copy versus reference cataloging, and so this was um, this was me trying to understand how the how the processes worked, and um, I can't remember exactly where I heard reference cataloging referred to the first time. But the way I think of these in distinguished is copy cataloging involves um, somebody who's cataloging something, seeing some metadata that they can that, that's useful for describing a, a resource, particularly descriptive metadata, and using that as a basis for their for their for their organization's um, set of metadata that they keep. This might be importing an existing Mark 21 record and and, and tweaking it. Um, for me, the the key there is that the that the person doing the cataloging may remember. Where they where that information came from, and uh, however the general the system doesn't the system effectively that when 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 changes are made the system only knows about the metadata at that point and it doesn't remember or doesn't know or have access to where that metadata came from. For me, reference cataloging refers to the idea that systems might be able to remember that and. If they did remember that, so let's say they remember that, that this method, that the majority of this metadata came from a from a particular source or a particular existing um, set, we might have opportunities to do things like detect when changes happen in that original metadata and ask the question: How would we like that to be applied? If if there are no conflicting changes, if if there haven't been internal changes that are different, we might want to apply that automatically. We might not. We might want to ask somebody to decide. But it, 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 the intention here for me is to reduce the 
the effort of trying to keep those things in sync manually, which I think is a, I hear as a continual challenge that, that happens is that, you know, a piece of information gets corrected or added to a some descriptive metadata for a resource and that has to cascade out somehow. And in a lot of cases that cascades by people spotting it and then going and changing it somewhere else. And um, for me, there's an opportunity where reference guideline can improve that by automating some of that workflow. And another idea that we've been talking about is, and, and this is coming back to the to the um, topics of standards and of interchange. And one of the things that's been particularly that's been talked about in a variety of different ways during this project. And it took me quite a long time to understand it, I think, and I'm, I'm starting to get a handle on it, I think, to a certain extent, is traditionally a lot of systems, I think, have adopted, from my understanding, is have adopted Mark 21 as their bibliographic and in some cases, I think, and, and including administrative metadata for their inventory of physical resources of, of books and journals. And that has taken what was a what was essentially an interchange format and also meant that the systems have kept that as their sort of as their record of truth and um, which has been very powerful in some ways it meant that there's been no gap between those things where that's presented a challenge is that we're now seeing um different resources and different ways of expressing that metadata and different ways of doing it bibframe is an example of how of how these things how this how this information could be structured differently and Dublin Co being an example of how we might annotate it differently. One of the challenges with this, I, so one of the ideas around um, Folio, what we've talked about is that we'd like to support, well, we don't like to, we, we need to support um, Mark 21 and probably other formats as a way of um, getting data, uh, pulling data into the systems and as also as a way of providing rich representations of metadata. One of the challenges and the tension that I think I referred to when I was talking about catalog was this idea that we might want that that that, we, that um, the discovery systems or the um, or the cataloging uh, kind of collection systems or the catalog and the cataloging activities have a particular desire for very rich descriptive metadata. And they might have some notion of other parts of metadata, but they're, they're you know they're focused on on that information and they need that information in a particular rich way and that richness might be different for different types of resources. We and um, what we thought about is the idea that you might want that but you might not want all of your system to know about that and, all, and some of your system to understand how to understand a, a more core and more kind of um, high level view of, 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 that, of that resource and that metadata that allows them to easily talk to each other in a way that means that you, know, you don't have Mark 21 cascade effectively throughout all of the system, but the bits of the system that do need to understand that can and can have access to it. Um, this is a topic that we've we've talked about at length, and I'm I'm a long way from being an expert in this area, so there's a lot of people who can probably talk on talk to this um, better. I think the um, it's one of the things that we talked about is the need to support a variety of different standards, particularly for data interchange, but also for providing rich metadata at the same time, make it easy for um, for different parts of Folio to, to talk to each other in a way that isn't coupled to existing standards. So we can potentially progressively move between these standards without having um, some of the challenges that I think existing systems may have. We've used Dublin Core as an, in, as, a, as an inspiration in some cases for what some of those core sets might look like, but we're, we're still talking about a lot of this stuff. This is very much, this is a theme that um, has, has, has generated a lot of conversations and it's a theme that I think will probably continue to. Um, we do, well, I don't know say, like, and, and what, what I, one of the topics that's come up before is that um, one of the interpretations that comes up is the idea that this means that Folio would like to create its own um, standard or format for sort of representing all this and, I, and 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 that's from my from my understanding not a not the intention we're not we want to embrace as many of these different ones as we can 
and allow the systems to talk to each other well and be in a, and, and, and not be reliant on details where they don't need to be um, and not to try and create another or a new type of um, metadata standard. Um, I'm sure this will probably generate questions and I'm, 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 I'll try my best to answer some of them. I think I'll probably, um, then might, I might need to defer those to, to, to experts in this area. Um, I've talked about this already a little bit, this idea of um, progressive migration or, um, and effectively this alludes to a similar idea, is the idea that we need to be able to understand, the folio needs to be able to understand um, metadata coming from different places and different sources in different ways, in different representations, and it needs to be tolerant of those. It also, whilst we haven't dug too much into this, is the idea that we'd like for, um, we need, we, one of the things that we talked about is how we might support the idea that you could move some of the, you know, kind of the uses of your system, existing systems and what's likely a set of systems. And it might be possible that we, I think there's lots more conversations to be had for this, to move some of the capabilities of the systems to Folio without having to move all of them because um, we're aware that migration is a big topic and a big thing that, uh, a, a challenge for any kind of endeavor where an organization adopts a new um, platform or set of systems. So this, I guess that those are the themes that have been emanating through all of the conversations. Sometime between, between following the October um, summit that we went in Copenhagen where I had a set of conversations about this, I started putting together some, trying, trying to express some of this in a way that um, could start some conversations around this to get, um, to try and start teasing out an idea of, of what these models might look like and what these things might um, might talk about. This picture is from a um, from a document that um, I put together to try and express some of this and um, was very much a, start, a conversation starter. It was it was intended to to try and um, gather feedback. We've uh, it was published on the wiki kind of around Christmas time or December time I believe and was and, and the, both, the, both the resource management and metadata management stakes have given me loads of useful feedback on this. The key things here are, and I won't go into too much detail about what they, I won't go into too much detail about what they mean, the, um, the, the themes that this was trying to express, if we look in the sort of middle top right hand corner where entitlements are, this part of the diagram was designed to um, was designed to um, express the, the the goal of unifying electronic and physical resources and management of those to the best of our abilities. What we've what we're very conscious of is that is that they're not the same and they're not and they're not in, and, and they have different needs. Yet there might be some things that are common to them and. Location is an example of a, a common property in the sense that physical items are found at a particular location in a library. You find, you find them on a particular, in a particular shelf. Um, whereas in electronic um, resources, you're entitled to access them at a particular location. In that case, usually a, a URL somewhere to a, um, that generally goes to a bunch of systems to figure out how to resolve that. Um, but we, there's always a starting point for that. So that example may no may not hold true as we dig into it, but it was there to express the idea that we wanted to try and have a way of unifying a collective description for for the set of resources that um, that a, a library has access to, and a way of refining the workflows and actions that are around that, so that we don't end up with as a system where two things that should be very similar, two operations or two activities that should be very similar, turn out to be not similar purely down to um, which systems are being used at the time and how the, or, um, or how those particular things are organized in the sense that there are some activities that are common. Um, as, we, as we get further in, I think we'll talk about, we're trying to flesh out exactly what those are. The top left hand corner, um, where we see this sort of triplet of external, internal instance and instance. 
is effectively a way of describing, um, and, and I'll talk about a later model that describes it differently, but for the same ideas or similar ideas, is describing how we might have descriptive metadata for Harry Potter and the, um, and the Goblet of Fire that's specific and unique to our organization. And that's what the internal instance was um, intended to describe. So that was the idea that um, as a catalog, if I was a cataloger in an organization, I might add a bunch of information or change some of the information to try and um, express it differently for the needs of my organization. The external instance was this notion that actually that some of this um, some of this metadata might be common and might be um, might be best served or well served by being held collectively and might that might come from external sources from sources that aren't inside the organization. One of the challenges of this is that the, the terminology um, tended to mix together whether the systems were inside or outside an organization and whether the information ownership was inside or outside an organization. So we've we've been working through a bunch of terminology. Um, the line between them was effectively the derived from effectively was designed to try and express reference cataloging. And the bottom left hand corner was particularly focused on um, effectively um, how electronic resources are slightly different in the sense that they're packaged up into a platform and then and then organizations effectively are licensed to have access to a set of um, to a set of electronic resources that are hosted by somebody and um, they're bought collectively and slightly differently to um, to physical resources the if any, for, for people who are familiar with it this this looks possibly like a little bit of an amalgamation between some aspects of good frame and some aspects of of go kb um and a little bit of inspiration from from you know, from other sources but lots of inspiration from other sources um that's where the, that's where these ideas started this triggered a set of conversations from the from the special interest groups it also triggered um an evolution to this model which looks quite different um one of the um kind of one of my collaborators on folio vince from uh, ebsco from ebsco um can people still hear me um okay uh, i'm going to hope that people can Sorry, my uh, my headset just told me that I that, uh, that the call has finished. We we can still hear you, Mark. Excellent, great. That's just a, a phantom. So I knew I was going to have a second technical problem. Brilliant. Hopefully there won't be a third, or at least I'm going to hope so. Um, okay. Uh, so this this diagram looks quite different. Um, it, it's trying to express similar ideas. It was and it was it was a set of conversations that Ian, and Vince, and I had. Um, to try and take forward the, the starter document that I put together on the wiki and take this into and to express it differently to try and help the understanding and to, and to explore some of these ideas, but also to refine how some of the presentation was done. Um, and I think the, the key here is that the, the, a lot of the web and some of the expressions can change. So the right hand side of the top of this diagram effectively talks about the, the box called inventory effectively talks about uh, physical resources about the resources that you that are physically held physically held, yeah physically held by or owned by a um, by an organization and the left hand side the green side um talks about how electronic resources and one of the themes that they've tried to talk about was that one of the significant differences between these two um between the way that these things are generally looked after is it's tended to be that um and I, because of the emergence of a knowledge bases electronic resources have generally been described they had their descriptive metadata and the way of describing packages and other information about them and those are sat generally quite often in systems that are um, hosted in solutions like EPTB 
Um, and they've also held information about what, what access, uh, you know, the licensing information and the access information that, a, that an organization has about those resources. And so the, there are some, some differences there, but there are also some commonalities. And we wanted to talk about how not only might the systems that that are operating on this be different, but also they might look, the, 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 some of the information looks different. At the same time, um, that central gold kind of um, area describes how this, this commonality, this unification effectively. Um, we've talked quite a lot about the, the name, Folio Codex is a relatively recent name, I think, because we've been trying to figure out a, a good name for, for what that collective set, the, the way of what we might use for a collective term for um, how, for, dis, for, for, you know, for so they're describing the set of all electronic and physical resources that, uh, that an organization has access to and what that might mean in terms of um, how, other system, how other parts of Folio or how other systems might use that and might use that information. Um, that's quite similar in a way to the entitlement, to the kind of commonality of entitlement that was um, that was in the other model. It's it, that description tended to cause some confusion. So this is a different um, way of talking about this to try and flesh out different ideas. One of the other ideas that this that this diagram expresses and that the previous one didn't is the idea that we might have different knowledge bases. Um, for different resources. We might have um, one of the themes and ideas that has been talked about is the idea that, um, you know, it's quite common for knowledge bases to be used for electronic resources. It might be that the kind of repository of, of, of a descriptive metadata for physical resources could also be a knowledge base and could also um, provide the seed for the reference for this, for either the seed for copy cataloging or or potentially the um, the the kind of um, ongoing kind of set that that are referred to by an organisation for their more specific um, changes to that metadata, um, which is which is what the two sides of the green area are, the top left and the and the top right. And down the bottom, we've got the the kind of what I think people are used to, which is um, circulation and the notion of um, uh, users and patrons. Um, the circulation is interesting because we talk about loans and we also talk about usage. We tend to talk about loans for physical resources and then we talk, talk about usage of, you know, how we, how much use has, has access to an electronic resource had. And those are slightly different. What we've, and, we haven't, and we've talked about how they're different a little bit and how that might manifest itself differently because electronic knowledge bases, and knowledge bases for electronic resources tend to exist slightly differently to the um, to the inventory that um, of physical resources that we have. Um, so Vince kindly published this along with a, a set of um, a set of kind of annotations and descriptions around this on the wiki yesterday um, um, in, in kind of preparation for this talk because we've been talking about it for a while and um, and he's had a, a bunch of feedback from a lot of sources so it's it's been evolving. Um, I, I think we'll, so this is one of the, these two diagrams have, um, this, the first one led to continued conversations which led to this. Um, and you know, so I think we're, we're, we're keen to, to find out feedback and have, and have conversations about these ideas. Which hey Mark, effectively leads me. Hey. Mark, can you hear? This is, uh, this is Vince. Yeah. I just want to let you know that I, I finally Hi. did manage to join uh, in a nick of time, it would seem, because you were just on this area. When I joined, brilliant, excellent, excellent. Um, so yeah, if, you, if you've got um, any any thoughts about if I've missed anything, or if you want to offer your kind of um, take on on describing this, then then please go for it. Uh, I, I think you've done an awesome job walking through the different elements <laughs> of the diagram here. Um, okay. One thing I might add is that. The diagram is also meant to illustrate one of the concepts that you're putting forth in this webinar, namely that we want to uh, give equal treatment to electronic and print resources. 
and that is kind of the, the purpose of the, the yellow area in the center, the folio codex, because this is an abstraction layer which essentially brings together electronic uh, resources described on the left-hand side and physical resources, which would be described to the right of that. Uh, and also, I think you did mention this, but this also illustrates a little bit the concept of referential cataloging in that that abstraction layer being the one that you work with, and these are the things you manipulate and display at the top level within Folio, uh, are essentially references to more knowledgeable, knowledgeable sources which exist in the knowledge base on the one hand or may exist in uh, more detailed physical records as part of the inventory uh, local to the Folio system. Yes, I think that, yeah, and I think I think that's one of the key things that the conversations we've had have been is that one of the conversations, the key things has been how do we express that um, that unification and that and that um, ability to refer to things. I think it also touches on some of the ideas of um, when we were talking about um, Mark Twenty One and BibFrame and supporting those standards and representations of metadata at the same time not having them. Um, necessarily permeate through the whole of, of folio, and I think this, and to a certain extent, and Vince, correct me if I'm if I'm saying more than I more more than I um, maybe should or could about my understanding is that the, the central idea talks a little bit about how we might how we have this commonality of expression that allows various parts of folio to understand electronic and physical results of different types, but also allows parts of the system to effectively navigate to that richer and, and um, metadata and information if it needs to. That's correct. Um, yeah, so, I, so um, I, yeah, I think, uh, Vince, I, I, uh, I think um, I, I was right in saying that, that this has been um, published on the wiki now and that, um, and that um, it'd be great if uh, people take a look at the diagrams uh, and, the, and, and the kind of surrounding documents and, and, and share their thoughts on it because we're keen to 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 um, kind of you know how, I've been keen to get feedback on these on these models. Um, so okay, uh, effectively that's um, most of the journey that I've been talking about um, in terms of the conversations and themes that we've been talking about. Sorry, Ben. So you about to say? Um, I was just going to say. Uh, it seems we have a question from uh, one of the attendees. Okay. I don't know if this. Uh, we tend to take them as they come up or deal with them later. Uh, so I can't see them at the moment because my screen share doesn't allow me to uh, do that nicely. So. Actually, uh, as soon as Mark's done, we'll be feeding you guys the questions. Okay. 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 Uh, so, I mean, so um, the good news is having people patiently listen to me for an hour, which um, yeah, uh, I, I am I'm very close to being um, kind of rounding this out. So hopefully we can get to those questions fairly soon. Um, so effectively, this talks about a lot of the journey and the themes of conversations that we've had, and I thought I'd briefly touch upon where we are at present in terms of um, you know, implementation in, in, and, and how the evolutionary approach that we've been taking kind of alludes to that. So I'll quickly work through that, and I think we'll, we'll, we'll get to questions as soon as we can. Um, so effectively, um, that model has been used as inspiration and um, alongside the UX prototype and the prioritization work that's been going on at the roadmap level to figure out, to drive the, the development activities. And one of the things we've been trying to do is regularly um, present that, so uh, that software in, um, in a kind of integrated form that people can see and look at. And this um, is effectively a, a, a selective view of, of the um, specific ideas that we've we started to express inside the um, inside the current portfolio system. Now, so um, predominantly, this has been about um, inventory of physical resources and, and circulation, um, and we've, we've been talking about electronic resources to a certain extent. But I think this is this is my way of summarising that effectively we've uh, we're you know we're starting to express this this model as. Um, software and, and, as, and as parts of Folio at the, at the moment, and so the feedback that we get is really useful because it allows us to to tweak and work on this as we go along and, and as we build up the the model in, inside Folio's implementation, as well as the 
as well as the kind of ideas that we've been talking about. Um, but that's a, yeah, it's a, a quick um, kind of idea. Uh, this, I, I guess, for me, this is my summary of of, of, the, of the ideas that we've been talking about and the goals, because to try and support the challenges that we face in, in this, and that we know that there's a need for, uh, we know that there's a significant increase in in the amount in the quantity of resources and the types of resources that we're describing and in the forms that they're being described in and effectively um well, most of the conversations have been about how does folio embrace that how does it take advantage of that how does it um or how could it and how but how does it also how does it work with that alongside also acknowledging what we are what we have at the moment and how we work with that too and how we and how we transition how we make that how we make the moves and how we support the um, progressive kind of transition from existing systems and existing sets of metadata um, and taking on new ideas like in data. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. Um, that was a rather whistle-stop tour of, of, of some of the, of my perspective and experience of some of the conversations that we've been having. Um, and I think, um, I, I think I'll hand back to Holly to, to allow somebody else to do some talking for a second. Oh, and, and very quickly, this is a quick um, slide that talks about the different ways that we 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 kind of value feedback in in um, in um, folio in the sense that the as I think we talked about, there are two there's two documents that have been published on the wiki, the the one that Vince published yesterday and the one that I published a, a while ago, um, that was very much a conversation starter, and there have been a variety of topics discussed on discuss for this I think for the for the, a lot of the feedback for this they're the primary um, areas where we're sharing information and, and, and looking for, for feedback and input um, and I've got some links that are on a later slide that I'll uh, I think I'll, I'll, I'll they'll go with the slide deck but we it's not very interesting looking at a set of things um, so yeah thanks uh, I thank you very much for the opportunity to, to share this I, I hope it's been a, a nice um, a kind of overview of, 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 of the kind of topics and themes that we've been talking about. And um, yeah, um, thank please feel free to ask questions. Okay, thank you, Mark. Um, it was a, a very good overview. Um, we have a couple questions, and for those of you who are attending, please uh, feel free to add some more questions. Um, before I ask the questions, I want to point out that I'm an IT person not a resource management person, so if I pronounce some of these products or acronyms incorrectly, uh, please forgive me. Uh, first question, does, uh, it, uh, okay, so it, it, let me rephrase the sentence a little. Is this going to support digital cataloging in content DM? I don't know what content no, no. So I, 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 I might be, I'm, I'm, me being new, it might be, might be challenging for me to talk about this. Um, in terms of cataloging, I think the themes that we've talked about, and so I'm, and I'm hoping this answers the question at your point, um, is we've been talking about how, um, how knowledge bases um, and knowledge bases that operate for different types of resources and for different um, degrees of resources. Like I know in some knowledge bases have that are curated have article level information, and some um, are very much at the um, specific kind of book or um, ebook or journal level. Um, we've been uh, mostly that topic has been focused around how how those knowledge bases could be utilised for in the context of catalog, both in the context of of embracing using some of the very rich and curated stuff that's already existing and then also in um, in how libraries that want to refine that um, that metadata themselves um, which is my potentially um, somewhat naive view of, of some of what cataloging of an aspect of cataloging is we've been talking about how to embrace that I think um, I think I, I, I'm not sure if I've done a very good job of answering that question um, I think I'd, I'd love to hear more an example that um, I could maybe try and kind of try and use okay um, second question is it 
is catalog comparable to electronic resource management tools like serial solutions, Intota, et cetera, or will it offer more ways to manage the resources? So I think so in, in the sense of in the sense of some of the things it's trying to achieve. Um, and so I, so I think so in the sense the catalog idea is that it was was very much a, a phrase that I think was used to focus our attention on on these ideas and, and these things. And there may not necessarily be a a catalog in the sense a, 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 as an actual thing inside Folio. But I think um, we are um, thinking in the same space of in the same set of ideas in the same scope or similar on scope in, in the same areas of ideas. Um, I think this is the the idea that we can. That, uh, that, that this leads to the idea of unification, I think, in the sense that um, Folio would like to be able to have sets of descriptive metadata that are available for electronic and, and sorry, Vince, did you want to go? You might be, you might be a better place to answer this than I am. Well, I can, I can certainly add on and say that, um, yes, this is intended to, to meet the kind of functionality that those systems provide. And uh, with, with the, the two things that, one, uh, we are attempting to merge and integrate a little better all of the electronic and print resources so you don't necessarily have to treat them as two different things, They're both first-class citizens. And also, um, this would be, uh, this is a platform, and it offers many, many possibilities, and, and extensions can be created onto this to provide functionalities that have not yet been introduced to any of the existing platforms. Yeah. Ah, thanks, that, that, was, that was a better summary than, than I was thinking <laughs> of, that, uh, of, 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 how, of how the modular aspects of Folio allow us to, to do the, the roles that those systems play, but for, for different sets of resources and in a, kind of, in a way that's extensible. So, thank you. Okay, and the person who asked the question said, thank you for replying. Uh, another question, will this support video? Uh, so one of our goals and one of the reasons why um, the topic of Mark 21 and Big Frame and, and all those ideas comes up is, is that um, we've talked a lot about how there are lots of different kinds of resources. And I think this alludes to what Vince was talking about with this, this extensibility idea. I think. Um, we haven't talked in detail about how we might handle different resources or different types of resources, but we, we are we want Folio to be open to different types of resources, and, and that is a goal of, of, of what we've been talking about. And and the the nature of those resources might be different. Where we're trying to do, I suppose it's, it's a balancing act, which is a, a theme I think that I think of is that the balancing act of how do we how do we allow a system to understand the general set of all the resources in a unified manner. Electronic, um, be that books, be that journals, be that video, be that audio, or, um, or even sets of scientific data, and the physical things, which also could be some of those things, um, as a collective step, but also allow them to be expressed well. And I think that's, those are the, those are the, sort of, those are the themes that we've been very much playing to. This is the, this is that notion of the, um, of how we of how we have a system that can do that in an extensible way, so that when a new resource types in, you know, turns up, when somebody decides that actually we want to start, you know, um, we want to start kind of curating a, a resource that we haven't thought of yet, we don't have to, um, you know, we, Folio can be extended to support that. And, and on so, that, yeah. the answer is once again yes. And I think that yeah. the video <laughs> format is is a format is, you know, is certainly something that will be available uh, readily within the platform. It's not a future looking format necessarily, but we, we are structuring this platform in a way that we can accommodate new forms of media as they become available in the future. Great. So we have another question. Could you expand a bit on your current thinking about how Folio might embrace linked data? Um, sure, I can I can try. So I think so from 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 the conversation we talked about this this is um, I think Vince talked about it a little bit in the diagram that he was showing to. Um, this takes effectively I suppose two parts. One is um, support for for 
linked data standards that, and things like Dublin Core and the idea that, that you know, that and uh, the extensibility idea that Vince referred to as well, which is that, you know, once we've got the way of holding this information, we can we can build ways into Folio for expressing that in different forms. So rather than having to do a, you know, potentially we can effectively um, take what's in Folio and turn it into um, a representation that works well with that, that works well for linking to or um, understands those relationships, things like Dublin Core, or, um, and also um, <coughs> the idea of the reference cataloging that we talk about, where we want to link these things together. I think I think about this as um, so. One of the things I think about is I've I've tried to think about how different types of metadata flow through the system, and how we want them to be. Um, distinct in the sense that we want to be able to understand them as, as as wholly understandable things on their own, right? So understand the descriptive metadata or understand the administrative metadata about something without understanding the richness of the descriptive, but also relate those things together. So for me, linked data is all about relations and it's all about how we relate um, these different things together in a way that allows you effectively to, to navigate through them. Um, Vince, would you add anything to that? Because I think that's that's my <laughs> yeah um, I, I would just say that um, to be clear the the folio structure as it as it comes out is not going to be a, a flagship implementation of, of linked data in any way but what we're striving to do here is is make this compatible with uh, a number of different ways of treating these things including linked data so we have, as, as Mark was saying, uh, referential cataloging, which supports the concepts of linking. We are, uh, you may have noticed in the diagram, following a very similar uh, modeling to what is offered from BibFrame 2, which would make it further compatible with linked data concepts. And um, other, other you know, ideas that are often associated with linked data are not necessarily going to be in here in the box. I'm thinking maybe triple stores, but they are certainly something that can be added on in the future if somebody wants to go and make something that is hardcore uh, linked data. Uh, we actually have a question from Twitter. Um, on the evolution slide, what's the difference between the blue and black lines? Um, what I'm, the difference in blue and black lines is that uh, the, the blue borders represent essentially uh, domains of interest to the, uh, to the platform as a whole. And you might think of these as areas that might be implemented through microservices or at least would be isolated through modules that encapsulate uh, the functionality in the form of interfaces and services to those. So the black lines represent how uh, you cross the boundaries between areas and establish relationships between things basically consuming RESTful interfaces. The blue lines represent internal to each of those areas a more uh, data-oriented relationship between the objects that exist within a given domain. So the black lines cross the boundaries, define relationships, the blue lines are within the boundaries. Okay, good. Uh, so that's the end of the questions that we have. Um, does anybody else want to ask a question before we um, call it a day here? I'll see if one comes in. Uh, oh, we got one from Twitter. Let's see here. Okay, another one from Twitter. Current standards, that's in double quotes, i.e. linked data based on DBL's principles or something else. So I guess when you use the word current standards, they're saying, does that mean linked data based on TBL's principles or something else? Sorry, Vince, I think uh, maybe I missed um, TBL. I think so for me, when we talk about current, I think when we talk about um, standards we're we're talking about um, a variety of different standards we're talking about an openness to them I, I think we're the primary ones we talked about have been art 21 um, Dublin core and bib frame but I think there's and, and, and I've done a little bit with mods but I think that I think there's 
um, there's ongoing conversations about a variety of different standards that are emerging at the moment. Yeah, I, I'm still trying to parse the question of mine here, but I think this is referring to uh, Tim Berners Lee, the yeah. CDL. Is that correct? Uh, I, I think that this, you know, this platform is is striving on a conceptual level to introduce the concepts, and we haven't sort of put a stake in the ground and said this is exactly the the specific choice that that is going to be supported and only supported by this platform. So if the question is, are we looking at this at a more abstract level of of, of linking and 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 moving forward certain standards? Then yes. Okay. Yeah, I suppose I'll, I'll add quickly that if that is um, Tim Berners-Lee, I think that the, we have on some of the topics talked about hypermedia and talked about links and relationships. I think um, I think Vince is right; they're ongoing conversations. But we have we have talked about those ideas. Um, okay, and someone asked if a recording will be made available, and yes, it will, and it will be available on the. Uh, Open Library Environment website, um, which is at openlibraryenvironment.org. Um, give us a little while to get it up there, but it will be there. So we don't have any more questions, so this concludes today's Folio Forum on the catalog. You can continue the conversation at the Folio Discussion website, which is called discuss folio.org and on Twitter using the hashtag Folio Forum. The recording of Folio, today's Folio will be posted soon, I already said that, but I'll say it again, to the openlibraryenvironment.org website. Our next Folio Forum will be on April 12th with the topic Resource Management and Folio, a first look by Kristen Martin and Kristen Wilson of the Resource Management SIG. Registration information will be posted to the openlibraryenvironment.org website shortly. Thank you to Mark and Vince and to everyone who asked questions and added comments. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks, Holly. Thank you very much for the opportunity to do this. Thanks. Thank you.